Are people good decision makers? In making decisions, do we take the critical and rational path, or do we rely on our intuitions? These are just some of the questions that Daniel Kahneman tried to answer in his book, Thinking Fast and Slow. Using principles from behavioral psychology, Kahneman shed some insight on how people make decisions, why we sometimes make errors in judgment, and ultimately leaves us reflecting on our own decision-making strategies. Here are some lessons we could take away from the book, Thinking Fast and Slow. Lesson 1. Know how you think. Kahneman suggests that people think following two systems. The first one is the intuitive way of making decisions, which he calls System 1. The other, System 2, is the more analytical and critical way of thinking. Of course, System 2 is the ideal way to go, which allows us to make deep reflections and analysis to solve problems. And most of us would claim that we use System 2, but in reality most of us think via System 1. It seems that in most of our decision making, we tend to think fast, System 1 like deciding what to have for breakfast, what coffee to buy, or what to do for the day. It's actually on a few occasions where we're confronted with something unexpected or out of our daily routine that we start thinking slowly, System 2. Thus, when System 1 could not process any information, we run to System 2 for help. Lesson 2. Be careful with intuition. Compared with System 2, System 1 is always on, constantly making sense of information we're presented with at the moment. The thing with System 1 is that although it gives an accurate picture of things, it's very much prone to bias and errors in judgment. Kahneman labels this phenomenon as WYSIATI, or what you see is all there is. Since we only work on a limited information and fail to gather additional ones, this could lead to errors in judgment. System 1 is so good at making a coherent and plausible story out of the limited information that we have, thus making it appear as a fact. Perhaps this is the reason why we easily jump to conclusions, give in to prejudices, and even be convinced with conspiracy theories. Lesson 3. Put in the effort when thinking. Have you experienced solving a math problem, feeling confident with your answer, only to find out that you got it wrong? Perhaps this is System 1 getting the best of us. Oftentimes, we arrive at wrong answers to simple problems because we fail to exert effort in thinking about and analyzing it. Simple problems sometimes trick us because we think fast and become blinded with facts. Kahneman explains this using the law of least effort, which suggests that our brain, by default, uses the least amount of energy with every task it's given. Thus, even in making decisions, we tend to rely on System 1 and use the least amount of effort. But we all know where this could lead us, right? Lesson 4. Keep emotions out the door. When making decisions involving money, we have to keep our emotions out of it. Our emotions may blind us and hinder us from being objective, thus affecting our decision making. When we find ourselves in a situation where we have to take a risk that involves money, Kahneman points out that we are more afraid of losing than we are more motivated to earn more. Even when we have about the same chances in either option, our fear of losing is stronger than our desire to gain. This tells us that we have to keep emotions at bay so that we can weigh our options in a more rational manner. Lesson 5. Learn about the tyranny of the remembering self. Kahneman describes two selves within us, the experiencing self and the remembering self. Simply put, the experiencing self is that which is able to describe what we currently feel and think at the moment. On the other hand, the remembering self is that which is able to describe how that entire experience felt as a whole. When it comes to decision making, it is usually the remembering self that has a voice over the experiencing self. The thing is, sometimes the remembering self may only retain the bad aspects of a good experience, and although it could be in the wrong, the reality is it is what counts more when we have to make decisions for the future. This is the tyranny of the remembering self. Lesson 6. Make use of optimism at the right time. We benefit a lot from having optimistic individuals around us. They're usually the challenge seekers and the risk takers, paving the way for new opportunities for everyone. However, there are times that taking a too optimistic attitude would backfire. Entrepreneurs, for instance, believe that they are skillful, ready to take on any challenge even when they're not. They may be too optimistic to believe that they will have all the resources and the help they need to succeed, only to find out otherwise. Thus, there are times when we need to be optimistic, and there are also times when we need to tone it down a bit. Lesson 7. Distrust the easy first answer. Distinguishing between System 1 and 2 thinking tells us one thing. If we think about it quickly, and if it seems too easy, then perhaps we need to think again. Maybe it's our System 1 playing a trick in our minds, leading us to wrong conclusions. When this happens, it's the best to go over the problem and start to think slowly yet wisely. In conclusion, truly this book serves as an eye-opener which shows us that people are really not as rational as they seem. Oftentimes, we feel confident with our ability to make rational and smart decisions, only to find out that our decisions are largely based on limited information, cognitive biases, and mental shortcuts. For us to arrive at smart decisions in our day-to-day -day encounters, we start to learn how to think slowly, 
careful, calculated, and analytical. Thank you for listening. If you like the book summary and you want to see more in this category, please like and subscribe so I can create more. You can also get a free copy of the entire audiobook by clicking the link in the description. Until next time. Thank you.